Hey, no fair. You guys are probably out camping, and I'm stuck out here doing repairs. As you can see, my uh, the front of my trailer takes a real shit kicking when uh, I'm on the road. Along with dents and dings from the rocks and gravel, I had extensive rust from salt. My bumper was ready to fall off, and my door doesn't shut. Sticks right there. Gotta knee it to close. Not good. So let's tackle the door first. It was pretty clear where the door was rubbing, and the cause was due to the hinge side of the frame being bent. As I could not find a way to bend this back, I would have to modify the door instead. Just trimming the bottom of the door would have been complicated, as I would have to remove the aluminum trim and seal, trim the door panel, customize the trim to fit the new shape, then reseal. Instead, I put the door in a strong bar clamp and tightened the corners. This compressed the door by an eighth of an inch, and I just peened the corners with a hammer. In putting the door back, I also added a washer to the bottom hinge screw to give me a little bit more room on the opening side. I also applied a little Loctite to the screws before I screwed them back into place, just so nothing would come loose on the road. So after those adjustments and a little bit of brute force, here's what we got. It's perfect. The old redneck strategy, if it don't fit, force it. The bumper falling off was too serious an issue, so I called in the professionals. In they came with their monster stick welder mounted on the back of a truck. As these arc welders ground to your trailer chassis, you must disconnect the negative leads of your batteries first to avoid any damage. Apparently, it wasn't the weld that failed, it was the metal that it was attached to. As the bumper steel is very thin, they added angle plate to both sides of each bumper for support. Here's the finished bumper all welded up and ready to go. Now the bumper's welded on there solid. A little paint and touch up work to do and uh, get the tire rack off. So I finally got a dry hot spell, so uh, now I can work on the front. I've taken the battery and the propane tanks off the tongue so I can clean these up. Just got a wire wheel on my drill, so I'm going to grind away at all the rust and any flaking paints and uh, go from there. I think that should do it. Next step is to use a rust converter. This converts rust to a paintable primer on all metal surfaces. It's supposed to actually turn the rust into its own coating, so works good for me. It's uh, highly corrosive, so got to put the gloves on for this one. It's supposed to come in a uh, spray can as well, but uh, I could see that being a problem, uh, especially around here. So. I think the best way to go is to get the bottle. That way I can get into the fine areas and not have to clean it off any paint or anything like that later on. Well, I think that got the worst of it. So I'm just gonna give it a few hours and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I gave the uh, rust converter a day to dry. It's a little bit sort of tacky, but I think that's okay because it's supposed to take an oil paint after that. So I have my can of Caterpillar Yellow. I mean, how could you go wrong? Black is beautiful, but Caterpillar Yellow is really cool. That's what I'm going to use. 
Goes on easy. So I might have forgot to mention, but this paint is rust paint by the same people that make the rust converter. So uh, they should match. It's not just any paint I'm slopping on here is where I wanted to get. And if you're going down the highway and you see an A-liner with a yellow tongue, you know it's me. So now that I've dealt with the rust issue, now i got to handle this monster. And that's the potholes in the aluminum in the front. But I did want everybody to note one thing, that although the aluminum is potholed, the plastic is not. not no marks whatsoever. Plastic uh, just bounces off, whereas aluminum is ductile. So a lot of people have said I need aluminum plate. I think not. Um, it's just not the material if I'm going to get a lot of rocks and gravel and stuff like that. What I came up with is rubber runner. I'm going to put contact cement, uh, the rubber runner to the front. Got the contact cement right here. Why rubber? Well, obviously the rock's just going to bounce off. It's not going to damage the rubber. I don't have to paint it. It weighs less and it costs less. So why not give it a go? So I only get one chance at this, so I better do it right. I'm going to put contact cement just in a strip at the top and the top here because if I miss a line, I've screwed up the whole thing. So I'm going to just try to align the top and hopefully I won't look like a fool. Let's see how this goes. Perfect, but good enough. Well, measuring around these pieces that are poking out are, is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, it's kind of measure twice, cut three times. Okay, a little bit of trimming, but I should be getting able to get it close enough that I can put the contact cement and keep my fingers crossed as I bring it down into place. Okay, mistake number one. Because the oil paint hadn't cured, it reacts with the contact cement and the contact cement and the paint wrinkles. So I had to remove as much of the paint as I can because I can't stop now. I've already got the contact cement over most of the front of the trailer. So, so live and learn. It pays to do your research first. Or you can watch me make mistakes. Never more. At least this crow found it amusing. So here we go. The, uh, the rubber's on. It's secured. A little bit of a problem around the trim, but I think I fixed that. I also repainted the, the uh, tongue after I messed up the, uh, the uh, paint job without waiting for it to cure. So now the sun's out, it leads to another issue. The very top part of this gets a little too hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it silver like I did on this test using uh, Krylon silver plastic paint. And so I'm just going to mask this off and the part that gets the most sun, I'll paint it silver. The bottom part though is no problem. Uh, it doesn't get hot here and this is the area that gets the most impact from the stones and the gravel anyway. So uh, mask it off and we'll see how that works. Well there we go. That was with Krylon fusion paint for plastic silver. Not bad. Really shows up a few imperfections. I got a few little uh, spots I got to touch up, but overall, looks pretty good. Now the results. So here we are, all set. Nice nifty new front. Little uh, sport stripe in there just for outer effect. Uh, batteries fixed. The rust has been painted over. I think it's time to camp. Just after making just such a beautiful job of fixing that front, and look what I did to it. Ah, oh, my goodness. Well, somewhere under there is a nice coat of paint and some really good rubber, but there's no marks. I think it worked. I still have more repairs, but I need to do some camping first. Keep in touch with my new videos, and please subscribe. Happy camping!